Good afternoon. Welcome to Long Live Third Parties Podcast. Free Press Media Press Inc., a third party books publisher, sponsors this podcast. I'm Andrew Bouchard. Today I read the case Arizona Green Party versus Reagan, 838F.3D983, Court of Appeals, Ninth Circuit, 2016. Friends, we're going back four years, so let us go back there to discuss the excitement of third parties. As you heard when I read the name of the case, it is talking about Reagan, but this is not Ronald Reagan. No. It is a Michelle Reagan. So what happened in this case that seeks to empower third parties. Let's read from the record. It says, quote, The Arizona Green Party, the Green Party or the party, having failed to meet the deadline for recognition as an official political party on the 2014 Arizona ballot, challenges the constitutionality of Arizona's filing deadline for new party petitions. The Green Party seeks declaratory and injunctive relief against the Arizona Secretary of State, the Secretary claiming that by requiring new parties to file recognition petitions 180 days before the primary, Arizona unconstitutionally burdens those parties' First and Fourteenth Amendment rights. Ballot access litigation follows a common pattern. The scrutiny scrutiny courts employ in assessing the constitutionality of a state's election law turns on the severity of the law imposes on the parties on the party or the candidate's First and Fourteenth Amendment rights, end quote. I am starting to see ballot access coming up in these third-party trials I'm looking for. I haven't looked at tons yet, but at this preliminary phase, I'm seeing ballot access becoming an ongoing issue. And I know this from reading third-party material, following third-party accounts, listening to third-party speakers, that's one of their main concerns. I hear them talk about that all the time, and therefore seeing this in court cases validates the importance of this to us third-party people. So was this court sympathetic to our friends at the Arizona Green Party? Let's discuss this. Let's see what they said in the record. It says, quote, in February 2014, the Green Party and the Green Party supporter Claudia Elquist filed a 42 U.S.C. statute 1983 suit against Secretary and Federal Court alleging that the February deadline was unconstitutional under the First and Fourteenth Amendments, end quote. Bravo to Claudia Elquist. Props to you, Claudia Elquist. You did a good thing here. Not everybody would do that, and you did that. So thank you for fighting this fight for third parties. Did the court rule on our side? Let's see what it says. It says, quote, The 2014 election has come and gone, so we cannot devise a remedy that will put the Green Party on the ballot for that election cycle. All specific demands for relief related to the 2014 election are moot. End quote. Alas, alas. That's nobody's fault here. It just happened. Unfortunately, it didn't. this case didn't come in time to change things to our side. So that's just one thing that happens. As you're hearing this case, as you're hearing me talk about it, think about what lessons we can learn here. And let's think about those lessons. Let's evaluate, let's ponder, and let's use them for the benefit of third parties. Another issue they addressed was called, quote, the balancing test for ballot access, end quote. As they say, quote, such that a state may justify election regulations imposing a lesser burden by demonstrating that a state has important regulatory interest, end quote. In this case here, they determined that it wasn't a burden. So, therefore, the state had a right to impose these laws. Number three is similar. It says, quote, burdens on ballot access, end quote. 
They cite some other cases here that I may want to read. Maybe you too. It says Williams versus Rhodes, Libertarian Party versus Ohio, Libertarian Party of Ohio versus Blackwell, Libertarian Party of Washington versus Monroe, and some other ones. One even involving Nader, Nader versus Brewer. They say, quote, in its complaint, the Green Party alleges that the February deadline greatly increases costs faced by third parties, was not designated to allow a reasonably diligent minor party to qualify for ballot access, and requires minor parties to gather signatures when the mind of the general public and the attention of the media is not focused on the general elections, end quote. That's a good point. They're causing the Green Party to draw this campaigning out. And that is not the best situation. We like to avoid that if possible. So unfortunately, the court said, quote, absent evidence of the particular burdens imposed in this case, we conclude at the best that the 180-day petition filing deadline imposes a de minimis burden on constitutional rights, end quote. Number four is, quote, Arizona's legitimate interest, end quote. As they say, Quote, unlike the Green Party, the Secretary presented substantial evidence that details the processes for ballot access and the rationale behind each step in the timeline at each stage of the election process. The nested deadlines leading up to the Arizona primary, as well as the tasks that must be accomplished between the primary and the general election, reflect an effort by the state to achieve the important goal of orderly elections. End quote. Do you agree with that? Obviously, they do need to do something at the state level to put this into place, they do need to run their bureaucracy. So they do have a point to a certain extent there. So they are, they are concluding here in this section that the state's interest trumps what the Green Party has to face. So they are okay with imposing these regulations. If only we could find a way that the state could do what it wanted while also advancing third parties. So how did they ultimately decide? They say, quote, the Green Party has not met its burden of showing that the Arizona's 100-day petition filing deadline significantly burdens constitutional rights, while the Secretary has demonstrated that the restriction serves Arizona's important interests in administering orderly elections. The District Court therefore correctly granted summary judgment in favor of the Secretary, affirmed, end quote. What did you take from this, friends? What are the lessons to be learned? Among other things, I reaffirmed the notion that we need to keep fighting the good fight. I love to see these efforts in the courts. And we love when these laws are challenged because they help us advance the cause when we challenge these laws. So let us keep doing this, friends. Let us keep going at it. Long live third parties. Goodbye.